A few years ago, I created a series of videos that showed you how to paint each of the 18 legions in their heresy era colours. So, with the new edition of Horus Heresy being released, I thought I'd revisit that and share some tips on both converting and painting your Mark VI Space Marines to represent each of the legions. And to kick off this new series, I'll be starting with the Dark Angels. The first step in creating a Dark Angel was to clip away the parts required to build one of the Mark VI Marines. The parts were cleaned up of any mold lines and sprue tabs before assembling the torso and legs together and attaching a pair of the bolter toting arms. This created the canvas that I could build up on in my customizations. The Dark Angels have a very distinct medieval knight theme, a style that was even stronger during their earlier years. As such, I looked to theme the armor so that it appeared more archaic. The first step in doing so was to swap out the shoulder pads for some taken from the Mark III Space Marine kit. These shoulder pads have a much more prominent, riveted trim than other pads. This helped to convey a more rugged and antiquated look. It also created a nod to some Dark Angel specific models from Forge World, specifically the Deathwing Companions. After dry fitting the power pack to check the trim wouldn't interfere with its placement, I glued this into place over the Mark VI arms. Tilt shields, the miniature shields that are often found on various Space Marine kits, are a throwback to the knightly pursuit of jousting. Naturally, this makes them the perfect candidate for laying on that medieval style. There are quite a few places to find these, but Primaris and Grey Knight kits prove to be the most numerous sources. It was from the latter of these that I sourced this particular shield from, specifically the Strike Squad kit. The piece didn't need any adjustments made to it, it fitted neatly to the inside of the shoulder pads trim. Another part that was sourced from the Grey Knight's Strike Squad kit was the helmet. The Grey Knight heads are surprisingly close in their appearance to the Legion heads upgrade set sold by Forge World, but with the added benefit that they can be picked up pretty cheaply from eBay or bits resellers. Being a Space Marine head, this was easily glued into place without any further adjustments needed. Up until this point, I hadn't used any specific Dark Angels components, mainly because it's kind of obvious how to use a Dark Angel head, shoulder pad, or trinket, but I did want to include that winged sword symbol somewhere. So I chose this vehicle icon from the Raven Wing upgrade sprue. It's supposed to be used with land speeders or bikes, but by clipping away and shaving back the top knob from one of the power packs, I could attach it here instead. This made for a good, Legion-specific alternative to a Vexilla. Once attached to the power pack, this was then attached to the torso. The final modification was another detail that I had borrowed from the Deathwing Companions, and this was to add some parchment wraps around the thigh. These would be created with green stuff, but first I needed to cut and mix up a small batch. To create the wraps, I began by rolling out a thin sausage, which was then wrapped across the thigh. The sausage was flattened out and smoothed out across the leg to create a flat surface. From here, I then scoured out two lines to create three separate strips of parchment. During this process, I made good use of Vaseline over my tools and fingers to prevent the green stuff from sticking to them. These three strips were then pressed together to create a tiered effect, where it looked like the strip slightly overlapped the one below it. After this, I smoothed the strips flat once again. To give the strips the look of weathered paper, a series of short tears and nicks were added to the edges using the tip of my scalpel. With the parchment wrap finished and allowed to cure overnight, the conversion was complete, which meant that I could move on to the painting. But before we go on with the guide, let's hear a little bit about the sponsors of today's video. Hello Fresh. When I'm not working, I'm probably spending my time kit bashing or editing these videos, so the quick, easy and affordable meals from HelloFresh are perfect for me. HelloFresh offers foolproof, step-by-step -step recipes that means a much more enjoyable cooking experience and a stress-free summer. Plus, their recipes cut back on time spent in the kitchen, with meals ready in around 30 minutes or even less. HelloFresh has also helped me to free up the time it would normally take to come up with a meal idea and go and actually get those ingredients, which just means more time for kit bashing. I get all those fresh ingredients delivered straight to my door. Another major benefit is that everything is already proportioned out, which means everything gets used and there is much less waste. Since using HelloFresh, I hardly have any food waste anymore. 
Plus, HelloFresh is the first carbon neutral meal kit company and nearly all the packaging is recyclable. But most importantly, it tastes great too. They have more five-star reviews than any other meal kit, so you know you'll get something delicious. Produce gets from the farm to your doorstep in under a week, so you know that it's going to be at peak freshness. But what's great about getting sponsored by HelloFresh is that we've already been using their service for nearly a year now. Before we used to get stuck in the rut of eating the same boring meals week in week out. But since signing up, we've enjoyed so much more variety. It's been great to try out new meals and things that we would never have tried cooking before. But don't just take my word for it. Go to HelloFresh.com and use code WARGAMER16 for up to 16 free meals and 3 surprise gifts. Once again, that's HelloFresh.com and use code WARGAMER16 for up to 16 free meals and 3 surprise gifts. A big thank you to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. I started with that ever important first step, the primer. I used some Vallejo Black Airbrush Primer applied through my airbrush with just a little bit of flow improver mixed in to help the paint through the nozzle. This primer not only gave me a better surface to apply my paint to, but it also provided me with the black starting color of the Dark Angels pre-heresy armor. You don't have to use an airbrush here. A regular old spray can primer would have worked just as well. Even though I'd used a black primer, it's often good to apply a thin layer of regular black paint over the top. Quite often black primers and black paints are slightly different shades, which can cause problems later if you need to touch up any overspills. Again, my airbrush was used for the speed of application here, but a layer of watered down coal black applied with a regular brush would have worked just as well. With the base color of the armor already applied, work could begin on the highlights straight away. For this, some of Proacryl's blue black was used. My brush was carefully dragged along the edges of the armor, leaving behind a thin line of a dark grayish blue. This would help to add a sharpness to the edges and to bring out some of the details. Weathered and battle damaged armor is something that always works well for the Horus Heresy. To create this effect, some pale yellow was mixed into the previously applied blue black to create a slightly lighter tone that would stand out against the highlights. Into this mix, I dipped in a small piece of torn foam before removing the excess. This foam was stippled across some of the armor's edges, especially in areas where you'd expect the damage to occur, like the knees, ankles, and elbows. The rough edge of the foam left behind irregular flecks of paint. The lighter color gave the impression of chipping, in the armor's surface. A little more pale yellow was then mixed into the previous mix in order to lighten it further. This light grayish blue was used instead to pick out the sharper edges of the armor, such as the corners and the rivets. It was also lightly applied in straight streaks to give the impression of scratches. With the armor completed, there were still a few more black areas to tackle. But to give these a little more contrast against the armor, I chose to use some dark warm gray to stand out against the cooler blue black. This was used to tackle the joints between the armor panels and the weapon stock. Like before, some pale yellow was added to the dark warm gray to create a lighter tone that was used to pick out some of those sharper details. A base coat of burnt red was then painted over the wings of the Dark Angel's icon, leaving it with a deep rich red, making it the perfect focus color for this model. The edges of the feathers were then picked out with a much brighter, bold pyrrole red. To tackle the parchment wrapped around the leg, I began with a base coat of light umber to give it the appearance of aged paper. This was then followed up by an edge highlight of light umber and pale yellow to really bring out that detail. The metallic parts of the model were the next to be tackled. These included the trim of the shoulder pads, the metal parts of the bolter, and the vents of the power pack. After using this, I did clean out my water to prevent any cross-contamination of metal flakes in to my other paints. The chipping was a good start for the weathering, but this could be pushed further with some mild rust effects. A thin glaze was created by mixing some burnt orange with some water until it had a wash-like consistency. This was then painted into a few of the recesses and around some of the rivets. The thinning with water allowed it to flow easily into these nooks and crannies, and once dry, it became opaque, 
leaving behind the effect of surface rust building up. This rust wash was then followed up with a regular wash, specifically Games Workshop's Agrax Earthshade. I painted this over the metallics where it helped to add some definition and a little more grime to these steel areas. The edges of these metallics were then picked out with some brighter silver. Not only did this help to create a stronger degree of contrast between the brighter raised edges and the darker recesses, it also allowed me to create a few surface scratches. By applying the paint in a few perpendicular lines, it resulted in the effect of a damaged edge, building up on the earlier chipping over the armor. With most of the model complete, I could prep for the shoulder pads decals by coating them with some gloss varnish. This can be applied by a brush or an airbrush and will provide a much smoother surface texture in which to apply some transfers too. After selecting some Dark Angel icons from the 40k Space Marine sheet, they were carefully cut out with my scalpel before being soaked in some water for a small amount of time. Once they were beginning to peel away from the backing paper, they were removed from the water and, using a damper paintbrush, gently teased the decal from the paper and into position, making small adjustments while the surface was still wet. Once I was happy with the position, they were given a chance to dry. One common problem with decals is that they are often applied to curved and indented surfaces. As they are printed flat, this can cause problems with crinkles and the transfer not looking like it has that painted on look. This can be solved with the specially designed solvent called Microsol. This softens the transfer slightly, which allows it to better form to the surface it's being applied to. A couple of coats is usually enough to do the job here, and once dry, the transfers have more of a painted look to them. With all the decals applied, they were given another coat of gloss varnish to help seal them in place and to prevent them from moving around. The decal was a little too bright though, especially when placed against the battle damage and grime. So, in order to blend it in a little further, a glaze of coal black was created in much the same way as the earlier burnt orange. This was painted over the decals where it subtly darkened them down and gave them the appearance of the paint being worn away slightly. With the model itself completed, I just needed to tackle the base. Things were kept simple here, with just a straightforward Badlands-style base. Some of AK Interactive's desert sand texture was applied across the base, being laid on quite thick in some parts to add a little surface variation. This was left to dry completely for several hours. The base was then washed with some more Agrax Earthshade in order to darken down some of the recesses before picking out some of the texture with a light dry brush of some olive flesh. To clean up any overspills from the texture paint and dry brushing, the rim of the base was then cleaned up with a coat of coal black. The paintwork was then sealed in and any glossiness from the earlier varnishes or washes was removed with a coat of matte varnish. The only thing left to do then was to add a few grass tufts from Gamers Grass to help add a little more detail to the base. Once this was done, I was left with this. And here we have the completed Heresy Era Dark Angel. While I made five changes to a single model in this video, this isn't necessary if you're collecting your own Dark Angel Force. These individual details can be spread across a whole army. By focusing these details to just your unit leaders and characters, you can add a great amount of theming to your army without spending a lot of time or money. This is just the first in the series, and I'll be tackling each of the legions in order, so expect to see a similar guide for the Emperor's Children very soon. For those of you looking to recreate this scheme, I'll include all the kits and paints used in this guide in the description below, along with some affiliates links to where you can pick them up for yourself. So before I go, let me just say a huge thank you to those who make these videos possible, my wonderful patrons. Currently, my top supporters on Patreon are Jonathan Hart, Ryan Little, Tim, Berserker, Daniel Dowling, Jake, Jesse Smith, Casper Limborg, Morgan, Mr. Grimm, and Sweatsman. 
A big thank you to you guys. And if you also support me on Patreon through channel membership, or you just use my affiliates links, then it is the kind-hearted people such as yourselves that allow me to fund the tools and paints required to create these videos for you. And so until next time, thanks for watching and goodbye.